everybody I hope you're doing well today I've got a special video for you I'm gonna be comparing two models of folk craft dulcimer for you today um, I have two different models and um, I myself was curious as to you know what these differences were gonna be so I'm comparing the folk craft FSH model and the folk craft folk roots H series models now I don't have the D series or a custom that may change someday you know when I save up my dollars but um, so far these are the two I've got and um, I wanted to do this comparison video for you so if you're looking around and thinking about purchasing one you can take into consideration these things okay all right so I'll flip this camera around now and we'll get into the nitty-gritty I'm excited and of course at the end you're gonna get to hear them now I will say um, and I say this with everything you guys uh, size will make a difference in sound but wood type is gonna be your main thing here okay uh, neither of these have the Galax back um, which I will get one of those someday as well I believe next year when I save up for a custom I'm gonna have them install the um, the Galax back what that does is that puts another it's like a false back okay so you have your main dulcimer then you have little spacers I mean just a tiny amount and then another back and what that does is that gets it off of your lap so the entire dulcimer sound box is off of your lap it's you know just a little bit lifted up so that when you're strumming it makes it a lot louder okay and it allows that tone wood to vibrate and make a lot more noise so anyway I shouldn't have said noise make a lot more beautiful music but all right let's flip this camera around and get into this I'm excited y'all okay so what we have here is in the back here we have the folk roots H series model and then right here we have the folk craft FSH series model okay now right away you can see there's some big differences here um, I'll just talk about those real quick uh, so that you'll know you know these add-ons and things you do will cost more um, if you're interested in that like this folk roots model has a preamp pickup installed in it the fishman and you can see right here probably this little silver colored thing under the bridge that's the pickup there for this that adds a, a fee of course and then the veneer on the fretboard is ebony here and that adds more money to it as well you can do the ebony or other veneers on the fretboard on any of their models I do believe okay so those that's a few differences as well as the sound hole options um, I don't even remember how many they have I looked at them I want to say there's over 30 I don't know there's a lot okay and I believe that if you go with a custom model they will even work with you and make a new one I do believe okay so you will see the different let me make sure this is in camera here yeah it is okay so you'll see that there's different logos here the folk craft instruments logo is here and it's also down here as well and the folk roots logo is here and here okay another another big difference is this fretboard on this folk craft um, FSH is vaulted it's just kind of pretty I don't believe it affects the sound but it's beautiful um, okay so right there you see there's two different names here and the reason for that is because folk roots uh, is a completely it was a completely different company that folk craft bought okay um, you can read about that on their website but they bought that this was originally a California maker who made these folk roots and when they decided to close folk craft purchased them and kept continued on making that style and that style as you can see is a little bit different so 
now we're going to talk about some more of the similarities first. The strap buttons are the same on both. They both have strap buttons, okay? The tuners are the same. The headstock is just a tiny bit different, but it's this flat headstock. Okay, so that's the same. The micarta nut and bridge are the same on both. The um, pegs for the strings are the same. This has ball end strings on it though currently, and this has loop end strings on it. If you're not sure what that is, here you go. Okay, that is loop end, you see the loop, all right? It doesn't make a difference in sound or anything like that, but it's just a different string type. That has a loop with a ball inside of it, okay? Both of mine are set up in the three string variation. So they both have three strings on them, but they both have four tuners. And this is the first time I've went to three string and I really like it. Um, the fourth string does add um, a little more fullness of sound, but I don't think it's worth it this is just me personally because my embellishments are so much easier on the on the single string than a double string all those quick pull-offs and things of that nature are much um, much easier to perform on three strings I'm sure some other people will chime in down below with their thoughts on the three string versus four string okay so there are some sim similarities um, and of course, they're built to the same folk craft standard. Um, and let me tell you what, you, you've probably seen my other, my individual reviews of each one of these, but I have not touched a finer finished product. And that's why I'm going to be folk craft. Um, you know, uh, I, I, I'm telling you, they hand rub each one of these with steel wool at the end and that takes it over the top let me tell you what when you touch this thing second to none I'm telling you second to none okay so now let's get into the differences all right right off the bat you can see that the body of this folk roots model is taller than the body of the folk craft FSH model okay so that's a difference it's larger Okay, the sound uh, body, what do they call it? The sound chamber, I guess. The sound chamber is bigger on your folk roots model dulcimers, okay? So, likewise, it's taller, but it's also wider down here, okay? So, I'm going to get into that. The, um, the body height here is two inches, okay? And that's not including your fretboard. That's going to be higher. This is just the enclosed body here, two inches. Versus the folk roots, the body here is two and a quarter inches. It's bigger. You can just tell, okay? Now, the width of the top is the same, but at the bottom, the folk roots width is larger. This is six and a half inches wide on this FSH, and this is eight inches wide on this um, Folk Roots H. Now, um, the fret wire is identical on both. This is nickel silver fret wire in standard size. Now, on your custom models, you can get different sizes of fret wire. The mother of pearl inlays are the exact same. Okay, they're both mother of pearl and they're identical. And I believe on a custom, they will do some different stuff there if you want them to. Uh, the fretboard width is the same on both of them, uh, one and three eighths. Now on your custom models, they'll go up to one and a half. And I believe I might try that when I go to the custom model. Um, because when you're doing these fast things, sometimes that bass string will want to go off the edge um, if you're not as precise of a player. Uh, and that's the same thing with the banjo. That string spacing and your fret width, um, your nut width, that's a big deal, okay? 
Um, however, I've played this um, one and three eighths fretboard forever. This is the standard size on all dulcimers that I know of. So you're not going to find anything smaller than that, I don't believe. You shouldn't. Um, okay, the overall length is just a slight bit difference um, there. And uh, so this one, the FSH is 36 and a half inches long, and this one is 37. Very similar, okay, of the overall body length. Now the VSL on mine which that is the distance between the nut and the bridge. That's your suspended string there, okay? That's the difference between the nut and the bridge. Both of mine are 25, and that's just the absolute perfect size for me. I love it. Uh, I won't be going to anything else now that I've found that. Um, and this one is all cherry. Every piece of wood on this puppy is all cherry, okay? Now you'll notice that the woods look pretty similar here, and that's because this is cherry as well. Um, the folk roots that I have here is cherry back and sides with a butternut top. And that does affect the sound. You know, your, your sound box is what's going to affect your sound, okay, what, and the materials that it's made out of. So when I do play these for you, I hope you'll keep that in mind somewhat. You're going to have a little louder volume with that, but you're also going to have a little bit of brightness because of the butternut versus the all cherry. So you, you know, I almost hate to play a sound sample for you because if I were to have, like, say, a, a black walnut, anything, if I were to have any other different wood combination, it would sound a little bit different. Um, so woods make a big deal. You know, woods make a big difference when you're talking about sound. So I believe I've covered pretty much everything. The The cases that come with these are identical except for the logos that are sewn on. As you know those cases are made in-house there at Folkcraft and sewn there and this one would have the Folkcraft green logo on it and this one would have the white Folk Roots Circle logo on it. And you can get your name embroidered on any of those. And they did mine. I had them do mine on this one. On the green one. And it, it's beautiful. And it's perfectly done. Um, so. Let's see. What else? What else? What else? I believe that is all. The. Strap buttons are the same. And basically, when I'm playing these, I don't really notice the height difference. Um, I don't really notice that in my lap. Now, if you'll look closely, there's a reason for that. Okay? If you look closely, let's see if I can make an example of this. It's just below the top of this pin here. What they've done geniusly that I love, the reason I don't notice that is because of the height of the fretboard. Look at that. They are identical in height. So those fretboards coming off the top of that body have the same, but um, that's why I don't really notice the difference because the fretboard height is the same. Um, I wouldn't worry about that as far as your playing position um, being affected or anything like that, but, um, me personally, I like the big boy. I like the big boy better, um, because of the kick and the volume, um, and I'm not talking about the tone wood here, I'm talking about the volume, the overall volume, because of this bigger sound chamber. Um, yeah, so now it's time to strap into these puppies and let's give them a listen. Please do understand that they're going to sound different based on the tone wood as well, again, all right? Um, this, I didn't mention this. This cutout is called Heart and Vine Pattern and this cutout is called uh, Curvy Road. And I really like the, um, sort of the Irish look of that as well. So, okay, let's, uh, let's hear them. First of all, 
for both of these sound clips, I'm going to be the same distance away from the microphone, okay? I hope you like my high-vis shirt. enough of that one um In there. Okay. Uh, what did I do next? I did some picking. Now a little bit with some strumming. spotted pony here. Okay. All right. So let's do just a little bit of strummy strum for you. I'll show you off my lap there. All right. All right. Um, I think that's a good enough sound sample. I may go back and edit these to where you have one than the other so you can uh, more readily tell the difference. Um, one thing I didn't touch on when I was talking about the comparison was the ebony. Now, the ebony does not affect the sound at all. But the overall feel of the fretboard is what happens with the ebony. Now, that is cherry with no veneer over the top of it. Um, if you have the funds, this is the number one thing I would do to any dulcimer. And that is add ebony or micarta. Um, I had a McSpadden that had a micarta uh, fretboard. I do prefer the ebony over that. Now, the micarta is cheaper because it's not wood, you know. Um, but it is better than your standard fretboard, in my opinion, as far as feel and play. Uh, the smoothness and quickness of your changes and things is what I'm talking about here with the ebony. If you can afford it, that is the one thing I would do over anything else. I don't care about the body size or anything. I would do uh, the ebony veneer if you could only do one upgrade. That's what I would do because it makes a difference. Um, does that mean you can't play it? <laughs> no. I bought one without it on purpose, and I wanted to. I wanted to have that more traditional look there with that one. 
Um, I'm just partial to cherry, and it's not because of the sound. It's just a sentimental thing with me. Um, but uh, I'm just a little more partial to cherry, so I try to get cherry. Um, my next one won't be cherry. It won't have any cherry on it. Um, I haven't completely decided there, but there will be some black walnut making an appearance <laughs> on that dulcimer. The back and sides, I'm sure. Uh, as far as the top, not sure what I'll go with there, but my point here is that if you can afford to make an upgrade, this is the one I'd spring for over anything else, okay? Over the body size, over anything else, that ebony. I don't know how to describe it. Butter comes to mind, but butter, you know, you sort of just sink into. Now, it doesn't feel like you're sinking into it. It's very hard, but it is so soft at the same time. I, I can't really describe it. The feel of it, the speed of it, okay? You can get some quick, fiery stuff going on with some ebony. Whereas, you really, I don't want to say you can't without it. Uh, I just personally feel like I'm a better player with an ebony fretboard. And this is my first ebony fretboard um, on a dulcimer. And I also have my first ebony fretboard on a banjo. And let me tell you, it's worth it. It's worth it to get that ebony. Okay, I believe that's going to conclude this compare and contrast video. I hope that it's been some good information for those of you who are maybe looking to buy. Um, I do have an affiliate link through Folkcraft. They have an affiliate program that anybody can join. Um, so if you're considering it and you got some help out of this video um, and you're considering buying, if you're going to contact them directly, please mention my name that I might have helped you a little bit in your decision. And um, if you're going to order it online, please use my affiliate link because it won't cost you any more, but I will get a little bit um, of commission on that. And that really supports and helps what I do here. The work that I put into this, I try to give you guys good information because I'm a consumer just like everybody else. I want to know these things and um, it just seems like there's some lacking information out there um, that I want to know anyway. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that and got something out of it. I'm sorry for such a long video. I hope you had a cup of coffee or a big old glass of cool lemonade. Um, and before I go, I always want to remind you that Jesus loves you. Bye-bye, y'all.